A compelling detective story, a cloak and dagger action and a romantic drama, all these stories were taken from real life. The history of Kazakhstan is inseparable from the world history. Reflections on history, our version. Alatal from Albion. I began this in October, and this is now the 14th of November. I never could get time to write. Each time I took my pen in hand, I was interrupted. And as for sitting up at nights, that is out of the question. We are therefore obliged to be careful of our candles. But you're already asking what excuse I can make for the last two weeks. Here I have a little family history to relate. I am going to tell you. His sideburns were trimmed and he was wearing a frock coat and hat, which was quite fashionable in the middle of the 19th century. A woman who was with him was holding a baby. They were standing near a road and smiling. Kazakh steppe is a wonderful, wonderful country and the people are so friendly and everybody has been so good to us. Yes, it's a masked ball, or a reconstruction to be exact. Although Peter and Steve aren't married in real life, they are relatives. Lucy and Thomas Atkinson were their great-grandparents. The baby is a native of a Kazakhstan village, and he has an appropriate name. It's son? Yes, Alatau. What's name? Alatau from Chibulak. Of course, they weren't the first British who visited the Kazakh steppes. However, their story deserves special attention. It is about Britain, snowy peaks of the Alatau Mountains, and the hot sun of Hawaiian beaches. She gave birth to a child in incredibly difficult conditions during that journey. And I never dreamed that I would be in the very mountains for which my unk, my great grandfather was named. The integration between Kazakhstan and Europe reveals itself not only in the economic sphere, but also in cultural. Chapter 1. The Short Story of a Family Expecting to return to civilization, I had not thought of preparing anything for him, when, lo, on the 4th of November, at 20 minutes past 4 p.m., he made his appearance. The young doctor here said that he would not live more than seven days, but here he is, alive and well. The lines written in Britain came to life again against the backdrop of the Alatai Mountains. A column of cars stopped, a commemorative photo was taken, and the family stories materialized. Kapu village, which is in the Almaty region, was established as a military fort in 1847, a year before the married couple from Britain arrived. Of course, there weren't any good conditions for life then. However, they didn't have an opportunity to continue their journey either. Lucy, by this time, was very, very pregnant. The baby was due very soon. And Thomas's intention was to travel back to Banao. But there was a huge buran, a huge snowstorm. And there was a meter of snow on the steppe. They couldn't go back. The main character of this short story about a family was born two months prematurely, which wasn't really surprising. What was surprising is that he survived. Yes, well, they were on horseback during the time when she was pregnant. And they were going across the steppe, and um, it was terrible. She practically died of um, thirst and so on. It was a very, very difficult journey. She was from a poor family and worked as a governess in St. Petersburg. Deciding to marry Thomas Atkinson didn't take her long. He was a traveler, artist, and a kind of undercover spy. However, it isn't a story about a spy, but a love story, remembered by their descendants. She put up with a lot of things that most women probably wouldn't be able to cope with now. She was strong, strong will. I think it, she was very determined. She wouldn't let anything get her down. She would rise above the situation and deal with it. So she was amazing. 
Thomas Atkinson's notes caused a big fuss, but later the birth of his son wasn't even mentioned in them. Actually, he did not write anything about his family. However, Lucy managed to fill that gap. He is to be called Alatau, as he was born at the foot of this mountain range. And his second name, Tamshibulak, this being a dropping spring, close to which he was called into existence. Incidentally, the Atkinsons gave the name of the mountain range, which enchanted them, to their dog too. In order to differentiate their names, the child was called Mr. Alatau. Chapter 2. A Native of the Steppe The story of his family is contained in a stage performance. It has already become a page in the book of Kazakhstan's history. <laughs> There are seven descendants of Thomas and Lucy in the audience. They have arrived from different places in the world, such as Hawaii, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom. As for the oldest descendant who has arrived, he is 89 years old. I think this fact demonstrates his interest in the country. You can see that it's summer and there are friendly people. However, Kapal Weather didn't welcome the Atkinsons in the 19th century. Here in Kapal, I have been awakened by the wind and I have expected every instant the tent would be dashed to pieces. The hospital, which stands directly opposite our present abode, when a buran has arisen, has been completely hidden from view. These winds carry bricks or anything that comes in their way. The safest plan is to throw yourself flat on the ground the winter of 1848. It was a very, very hard winter, very hard. Many of the Cossacks died. They just started building the fort. A large tent was used as a living room. Besides, everyone had a smaller tent, which they used as a bedroom. First, we lived in a yurt and then moved into an unfinished house. We have a chair, which is the only chair in Kopal. However, we are rich in tables. We have two of them. The bed is covered with felt and we use some fur as a mattress. We live like a governor, and I think that my two rooms are like a palace, Lucy later wrote. Is it quiet or not? Mm, yes, most of the time, yes. <laughs> quiet. <laughs> She's a very good mother. The child was really quiet and cried only before the weather was going to turn bad. Weather sensitivity and other health problems were treated using folk medicine. Have you ever heard of a baby pie? It's not connected with cannibalism, Lucy wrote. Alatal was swaddled in dough and baked in a stove. And it was so very cold that um, all the babies that were born that winter died excepting for Alatal. And they put it down to the fact that he they used to put him in the oven to keep him warm. The child was enveloped in furs and placed in a leather trunk against the stove to keep him warm. I heard the poor infant when there was a moment's lull in the storm. They had placed in his mouth a piece of muslin containing black bread and sugar dipped in water, and this was all he had until the third day. Time passes and scenery changes. Now we see Thomas and Lucy in modern life and they are giving an interview. They have a lot to talk about. For example, they say that what they ate during this difficult winter, mainly they ate rice and stale flatbread soaked in water. Lucy couldn't get used to eating horse meat, but they started giving meat to Alatau when he was only three months old. What song uh, your wife um, uh, sing your baby? I think you sing songs for him to go to sleep at yes. night, lullaby songs. Rockaby baby. Yeah, Kazakh yeah. language. Oh, of course. Yeah. Mm. Well, Lucy <laughs> could speak Kazakh and Russian. In fact, Lucy's Kazakh wasn't very good. Yerali was one of the people who helped the British lady to look after her child. He was a local governor's bodyguard. In addition, he was her interpreter and the baby's nanny. He was fond of the child whom he often used to take for a promenade or to show to any newcomer, holding him as gently as I would myself. People made a fuss of the fact that the child was born. Visitors even came from the steppe. They were treated to food and Mr. Atkinson played the flute for them. Sultan Suyuk was the one who came the most often. He was one of Abla Khan's youngest sons. 
He came to the Atkinsons when he found out that she had given birth to Alatau. Chapter 3 is Childhood's Brook. The rocks form a semicircle, and over the whole surface the water is seen dropping like diamonds to collect in a rocky basin at the bottom, from which it runs in a considerable stream over fallen rocks onto the kapal. At the top, large plants are growing, some hanging over in very picturesque masses. It's an enchanting spot. Tamshibulak translates as a crying brook, because the water of brooks drops from different places onto this rock formation, which reminds us of tears. At the same time, it's considered that each tear can cure certain illnesses. It is said that Lucy bathed little Alatau here. My husband does not like cold baths, but they help my baby and me to be perfectly healthy. Sometimes before bathing, it was necessary to break the ice, she wrote. Oh, the water's very cold. Of course, now the surroundings of the bracing source are different from what they looked like in the 19th century. But something has remained. That is a drawing by Thomas Atkinson. And that name Alatau has passed down in my family for a number of generations. My grandmother was called Molly Alatau, and she had, um, among other children, a son named Alatau Tamshibulak. Alatau was only seven months old when they left in May 1849. They approached a nomad encampment, which was somewhere in the mountains, not far away from Kopal. They had stopped there previously. They were offered a herd of horses in exchange for the child. Everyone showed joy at seeing us again, and most charmed to make the acquaintance of the boy. The sultans wished to keep him. They declared he belonged to them. He was born in their territories and he had received their name. Therefore, he belonged to them and ought to be left to become a great chief. The country, the people, the um, everything about it was so indelibly printed on her heart, really her heart. Alatau was given a pile of presents, including silk fabrics, jewelry from Bukhara, and many lambs and goats so that he could ride them. A touching story is told about another present, a Siberian deer, called Baskan is also known. They had a pet maral deer for a while. He was a beautiful creature with large expressive eyes. I was much attached to him and his love for the child was remarkable. One evening, I saw a sight that arrested my attention. The creature had bounded to the child and lying down gracefully beside him was reclining his chin on the bed close to the little fellow's face. He seemed to watch over him as though he wished to protect the boy. Their journey back was very difficult too. Lucy and the child almost fell into an abyss and they became prisoners of snow high in the mountains. Although there were wild animals, mosquitoes and robbers, the baby endured all these obstacles. In general, he was surprisingly strong. Epilogue, Hawaiian Chronicles. In England, after Thomas Atkinson's death, Lucy had to provide for her son on her own. She wrote and published reminiscences, which helped her to solve the problems. Thus, Alatau managed to receive education thanks to the distant Kazakh steppes. Later, fate decided that he would go to the edge of the world again, and at the age of 21, Alatau went to Hawaii. I think the thing is, what we all felt very sorry for Lucy because she went, they went back to England, and then uh, Alatau went to live in Hawaii, and he never came back, but she never went with him. She lived in England. This made Lucy sad, but at the same time made her son successful. Alatau Tamshibulak Atkinson was quite a respectable person in Hawaii. He died, I believe, in 1906. He was the editor of a couple newspapers. Um, he was the founder of a school that is still in existence and one of the very finest private schools in the Hawaiian Islands. So it's impossible to say that Alatau lived an ordinary life. He really was the son of his parents. He's remembered in Hawaii and will not be forgotten in Kazakhstan. A granite stone bears an inscription saying about him. 
Since I had a great grandfather born here, I feel I am Kazakh also.